I had no idea this game existed until I was doing research for this very retrospective. Sega Ages Golden Axe is a complete remake of the original Golden Axe that was released in Japan on September 25th of 2003. Huh, Sega once again way ahead of the curve with remakes of classic games. Seems like Sega was a bit ahead of the times in the gaming industry between this and a subscription-based video game service. Anyway, to give a little context to what the Sega Ages project is, well, basically it was a series of remakes and ports of classic Sega games. It included titles like Space Harry, Game Ground, Fantasy Zone on top of Golden Axe, which is why we're here, obviously. These remakes were made and released in Japan as budget titles for various consoles over the years. Sega Ages actually began its life back on the Sega Saturn and continues to this very day with the Nintendo Switch. Its name is also a palindrome. Our current video, though, brings us specifically to the Sega Ages 2500 series, a set of games released for the PlayStation 2 for the budget price of 2500 yen, roughly 22 bucks in freedom dollars if you were curious. All the 2500 project titles, including Golden Axe were released individually in Japan, but due to complications with Sony Computer Entertainment of America, they were unable to be sold as such across the world. So, Sega slapped nine of these titles into one disc, called it the Sega Classics Collection, and sold in the USA in 2005 and Europe in 2006. So, of course, I've got my grubby little hands on a copy of this collection just for the updated Golden Axe. Let's take a look at this weird little remake, shall we? Sega Ages Golden Axe hits you with the story of the game straight off the bat with a fairly lengthy cutscene, by Golden Axe standards at least. In the past, the gods inhabit and ruled over Earth, but then the Titans came and decided the gods were a dumb dumb doo-doo heads and began a massive war to take the planet from them and install themselves as rulers of the Earth. The lands were nearly destroyed by this war, but the gods managed to pull the fat W out against the Titans and exterminate them to the last man, mostly thanks to the power of the Golden Axe. Time moved on and the gods eventually vanished from the face of the Earth, though they did leave behind the axe for humanity just in case some bad shit happens. Things were going just swell until the last Titan, Death Adder, reels his ugly head and steals the axe from humanity, intent on claiming all the power of the axe for himself. Once again, our three heroes, Tyrus Flare, Axe Battler, and Gilius Thunderhead take up arms to slay the evil Titan and restore peace to the lands. Unknown if Death Adder killed our hero's family members in this canon though. Or Alex, for that matter. You're promptly dumped into a menu thereafter and given the modes of play. You have one player, two player arcade, and survival. I just played arcade since, well, what else do you do in a beat em up really? Pick a hero and jump into the game to save the lands from Death at her once again. The Sega Ages version still functions fundamentally the same as any other Golden Axe game, really. You have a combo you mash out, walk, run, jumping attack, a falling attack, and your back attack too. Your back attack is now mapped to only one button, and in addition to a running attack, you have a slide now, which... I don't know, it's something, I guess. Magic makes it to return too, what would a Golden Axe game be without it? Tyrus maintains her fire magic, and Gilius has thunder once again, but Axe gets earth-based magic instead of his classic explosion magic. I just don't want this guy to have explosion magic anymore for some reason. Everybody has the same magic levels as the first one. The only new thing here is killing an enemy now gives you a tiny bit of magical power, so you no longer have to rely on just magic pot pickups anymore. It's actually a fairly nice little change, it lets you be a little more loose with your magic usage. The magic effects are also... Weird. I, I feel like the effects in the original games were stellar, but these are just kind of uninspiring. Maybe I just missed the dragon being gigantic like in the original as opposed to just a normal sized dragon in this one. I guess the thunder magic is a bit better though, that's for sure. You know, a little cream will help clear that right up. Character balance is once again all out of whack though. If you're familiar with how the heroes were typically bounced in Golden Axe, it was like this. Tyrus has the best magic and the worst attack range, on top of the weakest attack power. Axe is the middle of the road, and Gilius has bad magic with the longest range and highest damage melee attack. Magic sliding scale is still the same, but now Gilius has the shortest range and slowest attack speed. Meanwhile, Axe's range is stupid long with his claymore, and while her range is shorter, Tyrus has the fastest attack speed, meaning she can blow up pretty much every enemy in the game before they can even swipe at her. So playing Gilius here is completely pointless. Enemy-wise, all the usual suspects return. Longmuns, Henningers, the evil Amazons, and Skeleton Warriors, of course, make up all the flunkies you can cut through with pretty much ease. The Bad Brothers and the Bitter Knights also rear their ugly heads too as the bosses of levels. The Thieves also make their return this time out, and much like the duo, they're a bit more furry as opposed to their formerly humanoid look. Surprisingly, the game also adds Spearmen from Golden Axe 3 as a normal foe too, alongside the Minotaurs from Golden Axe 2 as well. I like the variety. Hard to hate it, really. The only new, new enemy here are the Mages, which 
I want to say are inspired by the ones from 2, but these ones float and use way stronger magic to attack you with. Mounts are back too. Duh, it's Golden Axe. The Chicken Leg and the Blue Dragon being as they were originally, but the Pink Dragon is now orange for some reason. The Blue Dragon's flame is also way more broken now. Look how big this area of effect is. That's quite big. And the Fireball from the orange goes the whole screen. It's actually pretty broken. The Chicken Leg is okay, but uh... <laughs> Holy shit, what a lazy looking tail swipe animation. It's literally just the model turning suddenly. <laughs> Bizarreans also flee during cutscenes. Didn't want to keep that blue dragon at all, thank you very much, game. The levels from this remake are also ripped straight from the original, basically, obviously with a lot of alterations for a more updated console. The levels, alongside the character models, are ugly as shit. Time to stop feigning positivity now, because I can't lie, this game is rough. Everything is just so flat, blocky, and low res. What the hell's going on here? The original game wasn't this flat, and it was 2D. The models also don't look particularly good, either. Look at the wings on this eagle. It doesn't even look like a wing at all. It's just a massive block of fuzzy brown nonsense. The only positive I can note is that Tyrus has abs, and that's a hard yes for me. Axe has more of a Conan look, which is fair, considering Golden Axe was completely inspired by it, after all. There's also this, like, weird blur over everything. I ran this on a PS2, for reference, native hardware, and it was just blurry. Like someone slathered Crisco all over my monitor. I could barely make out the names half the time. Occasionally levels will be broken up by a cutscene, which helps to flesh out certain areas since the map screen that would help you tell the story is completely gone now. The problem with the cutscenes is that one, they're not voiced at all, and two, the model's lips don't move, which kinda makes it just kinda look awkward. <laughs> Really weird though is the elf kicking minigame is only in cutscene form now. You no longer get to reveal yourself between levels by playing everybody's favorite game. Why? I want to play Kick the Manlet. The levels are even worse than normal since outside the last levels in the game, there are no pitfalls to take advantage of. So you have to kill every enemy manually instead of cheesing the stupid AI by walking them off cliffs, or even just throwing them off cliffs. That's no fun. Also not helping the levels is how poorly paced they all really are. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but levels have a bad habit of just dragging on with the sheer amount of enemy spawns you have to deal with in each segment. Magic effects also just take twice as long to go through for some reason. Look at this comparison. I don't think this helps with the dragging problem that I've mentioned before. It gets a little boring, especially with how bad the combat is. Yeah, they screwed up the combat in a beat-em-up, and pretty bad too. I didn't think that was possible, but here we are. Outside your basic slash combo, every move you do has a noticeable delay on execution. In older Golden Axe games, for instance, you could execute a running attack on like frame one once you double tap the run motion. Not here, there's like a 0.5 second delay before your character goes into the attack animation. This is also the same with your jumping and falling attacks too. Your jumping attacks also have this awkward bit of forward momentum which can throw you off your target pretty easily. Normal jump attacks are also capped to one strike only instead of being mashable like in the first. So you no longer have a good jumping get off me attack and have to rely on your back attack for that. The slide attack, I never even bothered using. No point to it. At least I didn't think so. Oh, also Axe has the only good back attack. Gilius has a nice roll attack for his back attack, but you can't hit anybody with it, like, at all. Your normal combo is basically all you ever really want to use, since it's not bogged down by any weird delay. The only problem with your full combo is if you throw your opponent. This game has replicated the old glitch where you can get stuck throwing nobody. This happened all the time. Of all the things you brought back from the original, you brought this back? At least you're invincible for the whole throw, so you aren't vulnerable. That's nice. What does help the combat go a little smoother, though, is how absurd your attack hitboxes are. Look at this. Pyrus and Axe both have a little Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Virgil in them for sure. Actually, even better than using your full combo or abusing your stupid hitboxes is hitting the target once, waiting a second, then hitting them again. This actually effectively stunlocks whoever you're attacking until you can finish them with a full combo. But you know what? Out of all the stuff I've described so far, None of that is even the worst part of this game. Let me tell you what is the worst part of this game. The slowdown. <laughs> oh. 
holy shit. If there's ever more than three enemies on the screen, the game will slow down. Hit two enemies at once, creating two hit sparks. Slow down. Two mages casting spells. Slow down. Cast your spell. Slow down. But I don't know if it's intentional here or not. All of these things tank the game's frame rate. It's ridiculous. This actually got so bad during the final boss fight, I was barely able to scrap out the W. Surprisingly, it's hard to fight Death Adder and six flunkies at once while at 10 frames per second. It was so frustrating. Did nobody test or optimize this game at all? Watching through the credits, not a single tester to be seen here. A lot of support staff, but no testers. Guess this one had zero done whatsoever. That would, uh, explain a lot, actually. Budget title left no room for testing, I guess. Jesus Christ. So, I'll just wrap this up. Heroes kill Death Adder, and peace is restored. Hooray! Boy, I wish I could go back to not knowing about this game. Cards on the table, Sega Age's Golden Axe is terrible. It's ugly, the balance is completely screwed up. Half your moveset is gimped by random nonsense. The environments are flat and blocky like this is a Minecraft mod, and the constant slowdown is incredibly jarring and game ruining. It's not even particularly fun either is the problem. The combat being so bad and the levels dragging on for so long, on top of the more fun stuff like throwing your enemies into pits being gone means the experience is just a boring drag. Even though a playthrough will only take an hour, it feels way way longer the sounds are also just not as fun as the original yeah you probably couldn't get away with stealing sound clips these days but you could still bit crush the crap out of them for the hilarity hell death adder has a bit crush scream near the end <laughs> Why not everybody else? I guess if there's any positives about this game that I could bring up, it'd be, uh... I guess the music's alright. I don't think any of the tracks here are better than the originals, but they tried to epic the songs up a little bit, if you understand what I mean. Also, the last level where you fight Death Adder at's pretty cool. I like all the snakes. This is definitely the worst beat-em-up in the Golden Axe franchise. Worst game? I don't know. That's probably still one of the awful adventure games. But after putting this one to bed, we have come to the climax of our little Golden Axe retrospective. Stick around for the review of Golden Axe Beast Rider everybody, the last official title ever created in the Golden Axe line. Can't wait. But as always though, my name is Hades Manticore, and this here little channel is City State Manticore. Thanks a bunch for watching if you did, and definitely subscribe if you want to see more content from me. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and a comment if you have something to say, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.